So you got East Coast and West Coast. I'd like to know what everybody out there thinks. Which one is their favorite? Good morning and welcome to Coffee Walk. Got some cool stuff for you today. Got some updates on two big Jeeps we've been doing two big Jeep builds we've been working on, and good morning, Kels. Well, good morning, Dad. Nice to see you here. Wow. You beat me? I think I may have beat you in the office today. It's early. It's still dark outside. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> and I did a walk around and noticed some Jeeps actually back in the shop that I haven't I haven't seen yet. I don't know how because they're gorgeous, but you want to tell well, me a little bit about them? Maybe? Sometimes there's so much going on, I miss stuff too. Absolutely. Let me get my Richard stick over here, stir up my coffee, and let me go see what's going on in the back. All right, go Okay, so at first glance, they look like the exact same Jeep, but they're not. So are these customer Jeeps? These are both customer Jeeps. Now, one's from the East Coast and one's from the West Coast. And they're both 1984s. They're both 90 Olympic wide, and they're both wanted triple blue Renegade stripes. What are the chances of that? Um, pretty low, especially all the different Jeeps we have here. Yeah. How totally different they are. Um, so what this one's is from different? New Jersey. Okay. And this one's from Oregon. Okay. So that's about as east far as and west get. as you can get. Yeah. So both of these Jeeps, I kind of alluded to them on earlier coffee walks. They were kind of like Burger King Jeeps because these customers specified them exactly how they wanted them. I'm, I mean, they knew exactly what they wanted. I'd like to start on this one which is not as complicated of this build but when you look at it it looks equally as cool in my opinion so is this frame up restoration cosmetic so this was a mechanical? chassis up which means we didn't go all the way down to the bare frame and powder coat it and come back up nut and bolt so the motor transmission front rear discs were still in the chassis they were steam cleaned and painted and heavily serviced all the seals were changed the body did come off but it's not a nut and bolt frame up restoration like this one. Okay. Uh, Just this was a seventy thousand. Okay. You off on it. What's the time difference usually between a total nut and bolt frame off restoration versus what we did here? Uh, it adds another month. Okay. Uh, but this one has a whole nother month added, which you'll see in a minute. What's under the hood? Okay. So this customer did not want top and doors, which also saves us about a solid week in restoration. To restore a set of hard top and doors like that to that quality is a ton of work. Yeah. So this customer did not want top and doors. He just wanted a real clean look. And then if you'll notice inside, there's no carpet. Yeah, spray lined it, which I think is beautiful. Yeah, it's neat. And he, um, I like it when they choose the same color as the Jeep. Yeah, agreed. Most of our customers go with black. But this is white spray line. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, I would have up in, uh, this is going to, like I said, up in New Jersey, and I imagine this is going to be like a weekend cruiser, you know, super nice weather. No top, no doors. Right. Yeah. He also didn't want a dash pad put back in it because he wanted it like the old school clean look with no dash pad. I really like it. The, you know, the, the 84s, the, the 84s would have had a dash pad. So when we pulled this out, we welded up all the holes where the dash pad would have gotten screwed in and made any repairs it would have had. And you did the same thing where the soft top would have. Right. This had a. This did on. have a soft top on it, so all the snaps that go around the Jeep, we welded up. So it's just a really clean look. So he saw a CJ7 on our website. The paint color codes Captain Blue has got blue Levi seats in it. Well, all the Levi seats were low back seats. He wanted high back seats. So right. Kevin's like, "Well, send me a picture of the type of seat you want." This is an aftermarket seat. We brought those in. We went to our warehouse, pulled out the original material and covered these in real Levi's blue material. I like how he did that change up there because since there's no hard topper doors, the seats are a little bit more significant. And it stands out and it matches yeah. the stripe kit. Yeah. So if you stand to the side, the Jeep looks fantastic. We sent him some pictures of the Jeep with no lift kit wheels and tires. And he's like, mm, I saw some Jeeps in the background and I, I think you need to go ahead and put lift kit wheels and tires. So I was calling yeah. this Whopper Junior earlier. It's now a Whopper. Because <laughs> he totally customized it. Yeah, with lift kit wheels and tires, it's really nice. And I want you to see what's under the hood. He also kept the factory 258. This Jeep only had like 79,000 miles on it. So we did a major service to the motor. But as you know, we love to put fuel injection on them because it just makes them so reliable. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the biggest issues that you've always had with your Trans Am is the carburetor. 
We think or we know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the b biggest issue that we do have with these CJs continually are the carburetors. So we've got the Holly Sniper Kit, which was really neat about the Sniper Kit is it fits under the factory air cleaner. Yeah, so it's slick. So, I mean, it's just really slick. This was a manual brake Jeep. You wanted power brakes. So this has got our Black Mountain brake kit on it. I think that's a, what, BM 1402, something like Either that. Either 1402, yeah, it's not 1402, it's 1402. <laughs> so this is how we hard she's been working at the parts department. She's starting to have all the parts memorized as well. Aluminum valve cover, and of course, all the decals that you keep in stock. We do love the decals. We're trying <laughs> to add new ones um, at every month for sure, but so usually every like two weeks. It's really cool, uh, all the decals, because it's a custom touch to the Jeeps that not the normal person sees when you walk up to it, but if you if you open the hood and you've got anybody that's semi as passionate about Jeeps as we are, they really notice the decals, and I, it's a neat touch. I'm it's glad fun, we, I'm it? glad we've been doing it, yeah. And the thing is, as we get these really short mile Jeeps in, those are the ones that we usually get the renderings off of, mm -hmm. and then Zach, who's on the camera now, has got to spend his time spinning these and making them right. But for not a nut and bolt restoration, is that not beautiful? It looks like one. I would have guessed it was one. Yeah, we, for I sure. mean, so they brought in a great Jeep to start off with. It was a really good Jeep to start off with. Uh, it actually came out of our Jeep, so we keep in pre-shop. He came and picked it. It, it was silver, <laughs> but he wanted nine B Olympic whites. That's red. where it is now. Yep. <laughs> so now, I don't know if I should if this is a double whopper or a triple whopper, which I don't even know that they offer, but it's definitely a double whopper with bacon and cheese. It's got everything on it. So both of these Jeeps have got four inches of lift. They both got 33 inch tires. That's got the six cylinder fuel injection. It's just a really neat, clean, reliable Jeep. Mm -hmm. This guy. Looks like it may have a little bit more under the hood. Yeah, did you see what's coming out the side? Yeah, I did okay. see what's coming out the side. So look at that. 400 horsepower, small wow. block Chevrolet with four barrel Holley Sniper EFI again. So it's gonna be a super reliable motor. This motor was dyno before we put it in there, so we know it's gonna be dialed in when we go to fire it up. I really prefer when we do a build like this to have the machine shop go ahead and fire it up in their dyno room and run it in. Safe and reliable on that. Uh, yeah, I didn't notice the brakes got upgraded because I think they, need, um, they needed it because of the power. That's actually the first thing I noticed when we walked up to the Jeep, because I, um, I get a little brake happy, so when I see cars that have a little extra um, power under the hood, I always notice that the brakes can handle it. I mean, the two biggest things that you deal with, well, actually probably the biggest thing that you've dealt with on the track when you guys were out training in the Challengers and training in your Roush Mustang was brake fade, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, that is definitely a, a serious um, thing. And the brakes are reliable, but I didn't realize how important it was. Um, and she tells her mom and I that she doesn't brakes. drive her track hawk hard. Yeah, it's got 11,800 miles. It just had a complete new set of brakes. So I'm not so sure that you're not driving that very <laughs> and hard. you know what, Stuart Singer, Stuart's paint and body, if you were watching this right now, I blame Stuart. He taught me to hit the brakes hard to trust him, so. So we're also <laughs> AC. I mean, this is going to be an incredible machine. 400 horsepower, fuel injected, guy, power steering, power brakes, AC. The owner of this Jeep will probably drive it a little bit more than that Jeep. I wouldn't be surprised if he drives it every day. Yeah. We love it when the customer comes in and knows what they want. This customer sent a nine page, totally That's itemized awesome. sheet. I'm talking down to the nut and bolt to Kevin. It was incredible. And I talked to him and Kevin talked to him and he literally spent over two years specking exactly what he wanted in this Jeep. Which we love because our attention to detail is about at that level. So if he didn't send in that nine page, we would have sent in nine <laughs> pages of questions and he probably. Did. So he wanted a Dana 44 in the back, which you know has to come out of an 86 CJ7. So we pulled one out of the wrecking yard, you know, the four wheel disc brakes. You know, you put the headers on it and you can see that we have not finished this Jeep yet, so it's not running and driving yet, but it's very, very close. The headers in the side look really cool. Can you imagine pulling up next to this thing on the highway? Oh, it's gonna, I mean, <laughs> you pull up next to this at the light and you're gonna hear the rumble. Yeah, now, for sure. Now, he went with carpet. Do you want more of the OE look? It smells like a brand new car. It literally does, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, the doors are fully restored. You know, door panels, all the seals, all the handles. I mean, even down to this window crank handle, which is a custom aftermarket aluminum one, he specced that. I mean, every single thing. It was really neat to see somebody put that much time into what they wanted. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be exactly what, of course, we restored the hard top, roll bar pad, sun visor, new dash pad. You know, this is completely out, but this Jeep was a literal nut and bolt restoration. Tremec five-speed, big heavy duty five-speed. 
So it's this really one cool. is really getting close. It's got to be a stunning Jeep when it's done. So we still we got to get it fired up, test tuned, test drive, and all that stuff. But cosmetically, it's done, and we're probably even though it looks like this thing's ninety percent done. Yeah. I'm going to give it. We're about eighty percent done. Fair enough. Now that one will be done today. That's exciting. That's going to be a um, one happy guy driving that off the lot. Yep. And what we always do on builds like that or almost any of our builds is we always try to put at least 50 miles on them. Mm -hmm. I asked him yesterday, I said, where are we at on this thing? So we, we put about 35 test miles. That sniper kit kind of learns, you know, we bring Don't it back in it and test and tune and tweak. And we want it just to be just right when it leaves. But th this is a really neat Jeep. You want to hear it run? I do want to hear it <laughs> run. Yeah, I was going to ask that. For a six cylinder, it's cool. Hold my coffee. No cup holder. Uh, does not have cup holders, but that's I'm probably a good idea. With you. <laughs> so this thing is dead bone cold. And you know when you're helping me move CJs around at the house or in the warehouse, they don't always start right up. No, we've gotten really good at pushing them. <laughs> Look at that. How wow. cool is that? Really neat. I didn't even have to think about it. <laughs> no, didn't even have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> But it runs so crisp and clean, you know, it's just a different sound. Doesn't sound good? Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. That's what I love about the fuel injection. And because a lot of times these customers don't get to, to enjoy these very often. Yeah. So when they go out to hit the key, they want it to run. No, I love it. You'll see what's going on the body shop. There's a lot going on the body shop, too. I was too. about to say, if I haven't seen these two Jeeps yet, I know there's quite a bit back there that I haven't yeah, seen. Yeah, we've got hundreds of hours in that Jeep. Yeah. In, literally in the hundreds. This one too, but it always takes us two or 300 hours. I don't know how many we've got in that one, but I would probably approaching 500 hours. That's wow. a big build and it's a little bit more complicated when you mesh Chevrolet a little bit. with Jeep. But yeah. let's go see what's in the body shop. Ladies first. Oh, well, thank you. All right, what do we have here? Well, this CJ5 belongs to a major collector. And a lot of times when I find short mile CJ5s or anybody do, or sevens for that matter, it's because they didn't have power steering. Yeah. You hear me say that a yes. lot. So this is a nice original paint, V8 Renegade, low miles. You know, this is Levi tan interior. And these are the low back seats. And then these are the low backs. Got it. Versus the high backs I just showed you. Yeah, the you high backs there. definitely look a lot better with the no. 51,000 miles. So not incredibly low miles, but it is a low mile Jeep. And the, I'm, the reason why is because in that power steering, it's a bear to drive. Yeah, if somebody put 100,000 miles on it, that would be a labor of love. So this customer is particular about his CJs and he knows what he's got. So he said, I want you to put power brakes on it. Didn't have that, but I don't want the aftermarket kit. Even though we designed it, it's a killer kit. He goes, I want you to go to the wrecking yard, pull it open. Yeah, but you understand that. I do 100% like get it. He goes, I want to open the hood, and I want it to look like it did when it left the factory. So we went to the wrecking yard and pulled all the OE brackets and everything for power brakes and installed that and went to the wrecking yard and installed and pulled and installed a complete V8 correct year power steering setup. So even the most knowledgeable Jeep guy, this is correct. You cannot tell that this thing that had power steering power brakes when it left the factory, unless you had the window sticker. So when you're looking for a parts Jeep, is that a significant thing that you're looking for in them? It definitely helps the value of it. Yeah. Uh, the used power brake setups used to bring about 500 bucks, but since we came in and made our own kit that are only 229, it kind of hurt that. So we shot ourselves in the foot a little bit, but not when a customer wants OE stuff. Okay. Now, the power steering setups, absolutely. Um, we also did a detail on the motor and uh, serviced it and fixed all the oil leaks. So now, this thing will be so, driving one with manual brakes and manual steering compared to driving one with power brakes and power steering is a big difference. This may be a dumb question, but that is, is that the enamel, the blue enamel that we have for sale in the spray it cans? It is. It's the that, same color? Yep, that's it. That's the yeah. correct, that is the correct engine paint. I want, I sometimes wondered if that's what people were buying it for. <laughs> no, that's what they're Still buying Still learning? For. I'm it, like, okay, that's blue. It took us forever to get that correct, and yeah. now that we have the correct paint in the stock, it's really neat. So, yes, we actually we repainted this motor with that paint. Awesome. So, 
really step this Jeep up when you open it under the hood and really change the drivability of it. So, we're gonna see what's in the booth, which is only one of my favorite things to do. What's in the booth? <laughs> So this is a 1979 CJ5, which is a silver anniversary Jeep. People absolutely love them. They only made them one year. We've restored probably 10. We've owned a lot of them. What's really special about this Jeep right here, this is another one that a customer picked out of our pre-shop Jeeps when he came up, was this was a T18. It's very rare, which what is a four, exactly it's a four speed. Exactly. It's a four speed versus a three speed. And the first gear's got a really low ratio of 632 to one. So you put it in the Jeep, will just crawl up the hill. So when, these are incredibly sought after already, but the big collectors are the real knowledgeable guys. They not only want a silver anniversary Jeep, they want one that's rare. Mm -hmm. The majority of them were six cylinder three speeds. This is a six cylinder with a T18, which puts it at a different level. Very, very few built. So again, we completely knocked it out of the park. The paint is way beyond how it left from the factory. And this is color code 8C Quicksilver. Quicksilver. You know what, I would really like to see what this Jeep looks like finished. And I feel like I've seen a silver one in the back. Yeah, there's one in from a major collector that's a very low mileage one that's here for service. So I'll go, let's go in the back, I'll show you what it looks like with the stripes in it, the seats in it, and how it left from the factory. Awesome. And this one will be done this one will be done rather quickly, probably next week, but look at the paint. Again, we just absolutely no, it's nailed incredible. it. Incredible. Perfect. Silver is a tough color to lay down too. If you get any trash in it, it's a problem. When we shoot a silver Jeep, it takes us the most time in the booth because you can't get anything in it to mess up your metallic flow. Yeah. So not only we change the filters every time, top and bottom, he tapes up every single crack and puts paper everywhere in the booth, even though our booth's clean, so he doesn't get anything in the silver. I don't know if I've ever been back here while Silver Jeep's been painted before, because yeah, he prepped the booth just as much as he prepped the Jeep. It takes us an extra, it literally takes us an extra day to shoot a Silver Jeep. And he also takes, we always take an incredible amount of time taping one off, but if you look how perfectly taped off this Jeep is, because you don't want to ha cause a flaw in silver. Yeah. It's tough to touch up. So let me go show you, let's go see what one looks like that actually has the stripe kit on it. Cool. And kind of what the finished product will be on that. Yep, that's what I was thinking. There you go. <laughs> the next most desirable thing in an anniversary, like I said, most were six cylinder three speeds. Finding one, a six cylinder with T18 is fantastic. It's rare like that one. This is a V8, which was very desirable because like I said, most of these were six cylinders. Yeah. So this is a factory V8, 79 silver anniversary Jeep with power string and power brakes. Pretty cool. Which we love. Yep. As you can see, this motor's never been touched, hasn't been painted. As you can see, it's the correct color. That yeah, color but I feel correct. like a good engine detail that could look pretty clean. It, yeah. I mean, this, we, we are in the process of servicing this. She's been sitting for a long time. Again, it's going to a major collector. Uh, if you look at the seats, these are one year only silver anniversary seats. I'm seeing a lot of styling cues on this Jeep that are pretty similar to the 79th anniversary Trans Am. The color, the interior, I recognize that interior a little bit. <laughs> I would it's agree. It's a different color. <laughs> you're right. I mean, you're, that's, I would absolutely agree. So if you look at the inserts in those seats, they're the same as a Trans Am. Yep. They're perforated. Good catch. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. <laughs> it's the same. I mean, but we the major see... manufacturers, they're always, I'm not going to say stealing styling cues from the other guy, but. Heavily inspiring each other. Agreed. This yeah, would look especially fantastic. Especially now. <laughs> this would look fantastic next to a 79 Trans Am. That'd be a nice garage. Yeah, very cool. Last but not least, we have another Jeep that was, was in our pre shop section over there. A customer flew in, mm -hmm. and I showed him some of the rare ones. He collects very rare Jeeps. This is an H code 1981. V8 CJ5, Renegade, which is the rarest 81 you could get. Most people are under the impression that you couldn't get a V8 81 CJ5. You could get an 81 H code V8 CJ7. For the first three to six months, that's debatable. We have never seen an H code CJ5 at Collins Brothers in 37 years. And I only know of one other wow. one out there. Yeah, that's rare. You've seen more of the stainless steel CJ5 <laughs> Jeeps that we put up on Wholesale Wednesday than this one. That is true. Yeah, that's the third one of those we've seen. Wow. So really neat option. Factory V8, T176, Dana 300 transfer case. 
incredibly honest Jeep, and this Jeep was local. Now, what's your plan with this Jeep? Or what's well, the customer's plan, I guess, with this Jeep? The customer wants this Jeep frame off, nut and bolt, exactly like it left the factory. I love it. So this, I can't wait to see it finished. Even though this is a very good, honest, low mileage Jeep that we could do a lot of detail work to, he said no. He said that Jeep is so rare, it deserves a full restoration. We're gonna start blowing this one apart today. Oh, that's awesome. So if you all back here on Monday, this frame will be off to powder coat. Cool. It'll be completely blown apart. And 90 days from now, it'll be done. Well, we'll know what's in the booth on this one. There you go. Yeah. So you got East Coast and West Coast. I'd like to know what everybody out there thinks. Which one is your favorite? As far as the 284? Same, I'm curious. <laughs> and which one of these CJ5s is your favorite? Cool. So please like, tag, share, and follow. Thanks for watching and good morning. Have a great weekend.